I'd ask you to hang in there with me for just a couple more minutes today as we begin to wrap up. I want to give you a little bit of a Jaffe family life update. The doctors are reporting that things are going very good. Would you give God a little bit of glory for that? If you're new to Journey Church and you didn't know... um, Back in November, I had open heart surgery, and it really took me out for a season. Couldn't talk for about eight weeks. God had to knock me out. He had to slap me one. He had to put me on the sidelines for a little while to get me back to where he wanted me to be. And, man, it was a a trying experience, but it was a good one. It's given Mary Jo and I some time to think, some time to reflect, some time to rejoice. And, uh, you know, I couldn't believe it as we started to look back. We've been 19 plus years in full-time ministry, and in June we'll be celebrating 15 years of continuous ministry here at Journey Church. Come on, put your hands together. God is good. You know, in those early days, an amazing group of people came alongside of us to turn um, what we had in our hearts by God, a dream into a reality that is still functioning today, that we're still seeing lives changed. And over the years, uh, boy, have we had the opportunity to see literally hundreds of people get saved and be baptized and numerous lives transformed. As pastors, we've got to see some of the best life moments of our congregations as we celebrated with them with baby dedications and weddings and graduations. Man, those are some of the most wonderful moments of life as a pastor. And then we've also been with you at some of your worst life moments, maybe at your bedside while you or a loved one has been sick, or maybe at the death of a loved one as they went on to be with Jesus. And uh, those are the more trying times as a pastor. But at the same time, we've also had the blessing of seeing Mary marriages be saved, people being freed from addiction, others going on to become leaders of the church, and yet others even going on to plant churches. It has truly been an amazing thing to be a part of the cause of Christ, and it's something that Mary Jo and I are committed to giving our lives to until Jesus returns or takes us home to be with him. He's welcome to take us home to be with him before, or he's welcome to return before he takes us home to be with him. Would you agree? That would be good. Come on, Jesus. Rapture would be fine. That'd be fine. Even though I don't believe in that all the way, but uh, it'd be fine. It would be absolutely fine to go that way. Um, Enough beating around the bush. You know, what I need to share with you today, it's an exciting thing uh, for Mary Jo and I, and I think for the church. I truly believe the best is yet to come. Um, But Mary Jo and I's role here at Journey Church is going to be changing. Um, We're going to be spending a little bit less time than we have in terms of uh, being around the office and some other things, and it's important that it change. As I shared, um, in June 15th or or June of this year, we're going to be celebrating our 15th anniversary, and on that date, we're going to also be announcing that we are going to be stepping down as lead pastors of the church and that we've had the wonderful opportunity to select our successor, Pastor Adam Hardegree, and his wife, Laura, are going to be helping to take the reins of some of the next stages of journey. So I do want to spend a couple moments, um, yes, celebrating, but also sharing what might be the same, what might be different to make sure everybody knows what's going on in the days ahead. Um, First and foremost, let me thank my wife, Mary Jo. She's been amazing throughout all these years being with us from even before we started to be there to help be a part of this great church. And on in June, we're going to have a great day of celebration. We're going to share all the history of the church. We're going to have videos and pictures. You're going to see a much younger Eric and Mary Jo in some of those pictures. And uh, <laughs> you're going to get to see, you know, we walked up today and, and some of the blessings are like we see a Jeep out there and uh, the Jeep is being driven by someone who was an infant when they were actually starting here at Journey Church and now they're out there Aren't you all feeling older right now in Jesus' name? But it was really a celebration. Um, So behind the scenes, we've really been sensing for a couple years that God was wanting to transition, that we needed to transition, and uh, we began making some of those preparations. It's important that any church has a succession plan in place. Um, From literally almost day one, uh, when Mary Jo met Adam and Laura, God spoke to her and said, they're going to one day lead the church, and I was like, not yet in Jesus' name, right? But uh, like we we knew uh, just even day one that there was something that was happening, that God was stirring up something. And, uh, you know, about two years, we behind the scenes began that process a little bit by giving Adam and Joey and others more and more leadership roles within the church. And in fact, we had in October um, given Adam full control of leading the staff. So this was before I ever even got sick. So the sickness was actually 
more of an affirmation of what we felt and a confirmation of what we already felt than the reason behind this, if that makes sense, right? Um, we're not taking a new role because I am now in a new physical condition that I have to deal with, but we, it was an affirmation. And, and in some ways, I joke that... Um, You know, God had, like he did with John the Baptist's dad, he had to take him out where he couldn't speak for a while and made it where he couldn't talk and uh, made me go onto the sidelines because maybe I fear, maybe I would have changed my mind or something would have went different and and I would have not known that it was God. So um, he could have done it without having to whoop me up like that, though. You know, I'm really like, come on, Jesus, you know, did we really have to go that far? And he probably would say, yeah, you were really that bad. You needed issues, you know, so so he did it. But uh, so they effectively, when you think of about what's changing or not, probably the biggest change would be what's affecting the staff and the day-to-day. And, and for me, too, the biggest change is that I know that with the stress levels that are associated with leading a church full-time and where I'm at with what the doctors have told me, you know, I really shouldn't be maintaining that level of stress. So Adam and the team have already been leading it. So the biggest change is really for the staff, not for the congregation, because um, the new role that we'll be taking on, and we've committed to staying on staff and being more of a part-time role on staff for the next three years. So y'all aren't getting rid of us. Come on, Jesus. We're not going absolutely anywhere. We're staying here. So really my role will be threefold. I'll still be a member of the teaching team. I'll explain that in a little more detail in just a second. Um, I'm going to move into the role of overseer and trustee. So trustees is a financial oversight role for the church. Overseer is really overseeing and helping with the leadership of the church and making sure it continues on um, kind of in the same track that we've been going. And then uh, as the teaching team. So for those who have been here from the beginning, uh, we've always had a teaching team. It's never been a solo preaching pastor. Originally, uh, Brian Lamoureux was alongside of us. They went on to uh, pastor and lead another church over um, in the World Golf Village area that's doing incredibly well today. So we've always had this concept of a preaching team, and uh, we're going to continue with that. So the forward-facing stuff that you see on a daily basis, if you've been enjoying it over the past six months without me here, hallelujah, Jesus, you, you, the one thing you're going to have to be sad about is i got to preach a little bit more in the days ahead because I was totally out. So um, I'll be preaching about once every four weeks. Adam will be preaching a little bit more than he had. Give him a little bit of a round of applause. He's killing it. He does such a great job. But I'll still be part of that team and teaching it. Um, The core value series that we've been going through right now, I want to assure you that I agree with it. Mary Jo and I agree with it. We helped craft it. Adam, Laura do, all of our leadership team, our elders, everybody is in one accord. None of the stuff that you've been hearing is really a change in any way, shape, or form from what we've been doing or where we're going. We are the same that we've always been. Um, Worship, um, you've seen, if you maybe didn't notice, all the way, but Adam hasn't been leading worship all that much for about six months. They're actually better. Come on. Sorry, Adam. I'm just teasing. I'm just messing with Adam. Um, But Wendy and Elvis have taken on a new leadership role, as you might have witnessed over the past few months. So if you love the worship experience that you've seen, nothing's going to change. They're only going to continue to get better and better. So for the average congregational experience, nothing is going to change. Everything's going to keep moving forward exactly as it has been. From a leadership perspective, we will be anointing and setting them in place in accordance with our bylaws and our elders the first week of June. We're going to have a big celebration, and uh, I really truly believe with all my heart that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. God has big plans for Journey Church. Guess what? We're so lucky we get to keep being a part of it. Hallelujah. Amen. That is amazing, and I pray that you will too. I hope that you commit to being a part of the future of what God is doing here in and through Journey Church. Would you pray with me one more time before we go? Father, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you for what was, what is, and what is to come. Lord, you are the king of the universe and you had plans for this church far before I ever came on the scenes. And you have plans for this church far after I'll be gone. And even when Adam's gone, Lord, you are going to continue to advance the kingdom of God. And we are just so utterly grateful to play a part in it. We're thankful for both the good life moments, the challenging life moments, for the many people that we've seen saved. 
Lord, we truly want to continue to see our city transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God and our generation. We are committed to that, Lord God. We're committed to using our time, our talents, and our treasure to advance the kingdom of God in our generation, Lord. We're not responsible for the fruit. You're responsible for the fruit, but Lord, we are going to plant all the seeds that we can, praying that they will take root and bear a great harvest for years and years to come. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, amen, amen and amen.